Welcome to an episode of Behind the Scenes, a weekly program unveiling the biggest political developments in Somali politics and a wider Horn of Africa region. I'm Sultan Mohammed, your host and producer here on Horfa de Media. On this week's program, the 13th of December will be a historic moment in Somali history as the country's debt, which earmarked at a whopping 277% of national GDP in 1991, will be reduced to less than 10% of national GDP following Somalia's completion of the debt relief program under the heavily indebted poor countries program or HIPC. Now this is the topic on our program today. We hope you find this program very informative. Please like, share, and for similar content, do subscribe to Hot Freddy TV, where you are currently watching this program and where you can find other exclusive programs regarding Somalia and the wider Africa region. Finally, do follow myself, Sultan Mohammed, Suleiman Hashi, Yasin Abdi, and the wider Hot media team and our social media platforms that should appear on the screen any moment. Let's get straight into the headlines. Somalia's major debt accumulated immediately following the independence of the country in 1960. During the civilian government, funds were obtained to develop public investment programs and balance of payment support. However, following the toppling of the civilian government by the Somali military in 1969, large amounts of debt accumulated during this period also included military equipment and other technicalities that were utilized during Somalia's attempt, attempted liberation of neighboring Somali territories as well as supporting African liberation causes across the continent. For instance, Somalia had a large debt owed to Russia, which amounted to $678.6 million, accumulating during the close relationship between the then socialist Somali government and the communist Soviet Union during the early periods of the Cold War. Similarly, Somalia owes over $1 billion to the US government, with the majority being owed to the Pentagon, which again demonstrates the military interest behind the borrowing at that time. Following the military defeat faced by the Badr regime in 1978 against a coalition of forces that supported the communist Ethiopian Derg regime, including the former ally, the Soviet Union, Somalia entered a period of economic turmoil due to the cost of the war. During the 1980s, Somalia faced difficulty servicing its debts, which resulted in two rescheduling agreements in 1985 and 1987 with the Paris Club creditors. Now, debt would continue to rise, reaching unsustainable levels in 91, when national debt made up 277% of GDP in Somalia. This was likely as a result of the political instability within the country, as the government was focused on crushing opposition and maintaining power rather than stabilizing the economy. I mean, the mere fact that the government failed to pay debt in 1985 and 87, when there was more stability in comparison to 91, demonstrates a level of incompetency and the lack of urgency at the heart of the Badr regime towards the end of its rule. Now, Somalia would not re-engage the international community for another 22 years until the creation of the federal government in 2012, led by President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud. However, despite attempts by the government to seek rectification regarding the major debt and the unfreezing of Somali assets abroad, this failed to occur until 2015 due to allegations of corruption and ungovernability of the country at that time. For instance, during the early periods of the federal government, it lacked any central system for payments for civil servants. The military did not have any biometric data to identify soldiers, among other issues, which were the basics to transparent financial governance needed to secure enough trust from multinational creditors, as well as major international organizations such as the IMF and the World Bank. Additionally, major scandals of corruption such as the 2013 resignation of Central Bank Governor Yusuf Abrar only seven weeks into office due to concerns regarding graft made matters worse. In fact, Abrar's predecessor, Abdul Salam Amr, also quit after the UN monitors linked him to irregularities regarding millions of dollars withdrawn from the Central Bank, which Amr himself, of course, denies. Now, this was made even worse by a UN report the following year in 2014, which accused President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud himself, a former foreign minister for Syria, Yusuf Erdin, and US law firm Shulman Rogers of conspiring to divert Somali assets recovered abroad. Nevertheless, Somalia would eventually seek IMF assistance in 2015 to formulate a strategy for future debt relief, emphasizing comprehensive reforms to prevent reoccurrence of debt challenges post this relief. An IMF resident representative was appointed to enhance collaboration and by post May 2016, the federal government of Somalia engaged in informal IMF staff monitored programs or SMPs, establishing cooperative track record. And this is important, of course, because track record will increase trust between the IMF 
and Somalia, particularly during the latter period of Hassan Sheikh Mohammed's government. Now, these programs focus on implementing sound macroeconomic policies, enhancing institutional capacity, and fostering economic growth by strengthening governance, fiscal discipline, monetary policy implementation, and financial sector development. Now, the work begun by President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed during his final year in office was continued by President Mohammed Abdullah Farmajo, who helped reach major milestone during his four-year tenure, which includes, which sorry, excludes the final year between 21 and 22, as this was a period of political turmoil with Prime Minister Robla at the helm of the government, which was focused on holding elections at that time. Now, the Farmajo administration managed to complete four 12-month SMPs, which provided the basis for a move to formal IMF arrangement. Because remember, there was an informal IMF arrangement established in 2015 under. Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, and this was to build trust initially. And once four programs of SMPs were completed, then we moved to formal IMF arrangements. Now, this would result in the IMF's executive board approving a three year arrangement under the Extended Credit Facility or ECF and the Extended Fund Facility or EFF for Somalia in the amount of about $395.5 million. The IMF supported program aimed to facilitate the execution of reform agenda, attract consensual donor funding, and achieve key objectives such as realizing the National Development Plan, enhancing economic resilience, promoting inclusive growth, and mitigating poverty. Notably, the approval of this arrangement marks Somalia's complete reintegration into the international community, a global financial system. For instance, now if we compare that period to the 2013 to 2016 period, Somalia's real GDP averaged around 2.9%, inflation averaged about 1%, and the, the, the budget deficit averaged less than 0.1% of GDP. Now, the changes in tax policies and improved tax administration helped to diversify central government revenue away from reliance on custom duties, which was the case during Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud's first tenure, and other trade taxes, resulting in 29 growth in revenue from taxes and other domestic policies. The additional revenue enabled the federal government to increase spending to 5.7% 5, 5 of GDP. Now, the federal government transfers to the federal member states and other subnational governments increased slightly from 9% of spending in 2017 to 11% by 2020, which is an increase of 2%, according to World Bank analysis. The reforms helped Somalia prove its commitment to reforms and boosted its chances of being readmitted to the credit lines and receiving current debt reliefs. Now, it's important to note that Somalia did join the HIPC program, did not join, sorry, until 2020, following a major achievements between 2016 and 2020. Now, the major milestones reached included a race to the World Bank's International Development Associations, where clearly March 5th, 2020, with bridge financing from Norway reimbursed through a development policy grant. Number two, IMF arrears were settled in March 25th, 2020, with bridge financing from Italy reimbursed through front-loaded access under a new IMF financial arrangement. And number three, arrears to the African Development Bank Group were cleared on March 2nd, 2020, with bridge financing from the UK and a contribution from the EU reimbursed through a policy-based operation grant. Now, the biggest achievement, the biggest reached up to this date, is the cancellation of $1.4 billion of debt owed by Somalia to the Paris club creditors under the so-called Cologne Terms Agreement. Now, the then Minister of Finance, Abdurrahman Bayle, had a successful meeting with all the respective Paris club creditors, which enabled the slashing of Somalia's national debt. The remaining debt is said to be written on via the completion of the HIPC program, which is set to be December 13th, 2023, under the current Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud administration. So FYI, for those uh, that do not know what the Paris Club is, here's a brief description of what it is. It's a group of officials from major creditor nations aiming to coordinate substantial solutions for payment difficulties faced by debtor countries or countries that are in debt. They offer more debt treatments for countries that are in debt that implement reforms to stabilize their macroeconomic and financial conditions. Now, ultimately, Somalia would join the HIPC program in March 2020 following major reforms that were approved by the IMF and the World Bank. And the three-year period under the program is set to end now. So what's next for Somalia? I think what's next for Somalia, and it, what it can gain significantly from, is the International Development Association Funds, which is dedicated to elevating poverty by offering zero to low interest loans, term credits, and grants for programs fostering economic growth, reducing inequalities, and enhancing living conditions. 
Now, operating on consensual terms, IDA provides credits with minimal or zero interest charges and repayments extended over 30 to 40 years. Over half of IDA countries receive their resources either entirely or half as grants with no repayments obligations. And this would be significant to Somalia because Somalia wants to complete a high HIPC program and it's built that level of trust amongst international creditors. It could obtain nearly half of this you know, credit as grants which could be beneficial because Somalia is a low-income country and is at a higher risk of debt distress. The latest replenishment, ID20, for instance, if we look at the IDA, concluded in March, December 2021, resulted in a groundbreaking $93 billion financing package for IDA countries from 2022 to 2025, and this could be beneficial for Somalia. And this substantial funding will empower Somalia to provide more funding for public infrastructure and projects. You know, for instance, we have constant, constant effects of rain on the streets of the capital, for example, in Mogadishu, let alone other major towns and cities across the country, as well as relief to both flood and drought victims who have been impacted dramatically the last three to four years with, with unprecedented amounts of droughts and flooding happening in Somalia. And this can be all done while simultaneously developing new policies to counter national disasters. Imagine a future where Somalia emerges from the shackles of debt distress, fostering poverty elevation youth employment and much needed development projects that is a future which is closer than you think but that only depends on somalia's government being efficient transparent and tackling corruption